All right. So I guess after lunch, everyone is that heavy. Any jokes? No. <laughs> we need a joke. All right. So um, we'll talk about electromagnetic 101. Uh, so you can fall asleep and then come back when the system is going to come back and uh, we're all happy. So I'll talk about ultra-short pulses, communication and sensor system. And uh, I'll show some uh, nifty optical antennas for those of you who are interested. So why ultra-short pulses? So we, go, we are talking now about the physical layers, not the system layers. Because as we heard from Osvaldo and others, uh, people envision 5G uh, systems going to be at the, range, at the bandwidth of 10 gigabit or more. And so uh, one of the key components is the antenna that enables this transmission through the air. Most antennas are dispersive, meaning that if you send a very short pulse, they broaden the pulse. And I'll show example. So it's not so prevalent in the RF and the microwave domain but ultra-short pulses are the backbones of optical systems. Sonnet et al. Now optical system runs at the 40 gigabit uh, uh, bandwidth range. And so the on-off king or ones and zero run with uh, ultra-short pulses. So why ultra-short pulses? If you want to build up an ad hoc high-speed communication system in the terahertz, in the RF, in the microwave, millimeter wave. Uh, you can use the ultra-short pulses to disrupt uh, vehicles, as the Army likes to see. You can monitor missiles. You can be use it also in near-field communication system, as it's called molecular communication. So the key, again, is the antenna. So. The uh, physical layer is now enabled by ultra-wideband uh, systems, which are based on relatively high peak power and overall low average power. So you basically send the pulse, send the pulse, but the pulse is very narrow in time. That's sometimes hard to deliver to mostly uh, frequency-oriented people. Uh, as opticians, we are more used to ultra-short pulses in time domain, okay? Pulse. Pulse, 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 okay. All right, uh, the UWB applications are intended mostly for communications, uh, but they can also be used for sensing as we saw before. So the UWB has been allocated the three to 10 gigabit, uh, gigahertz uh, uh, frequency band, as you see from here. And the advantage are that it transmits uh, carriers less. It's a baseband system. It's a high pulse resolution, high data rate, uh, larger than 100 megabit per second, large channel capacity, low intercept probability, and short range communication system. As we heard before, some people now go into the optical domain, but that can be realized either in the optical or the microwave. The problem, again, in the microwave is that there aren't components that support short pulse. And when I say short pulse, I mean short pulse with a bandwidth of 10 gigahertz, which translates to a pulse which is 100 picosecond or less, okay? Uh, uh, one gigahertz is one nanosecond uh, equivalent. Okay. so. The short pulse is not, the problem is that it's not only that you send the bandwidth. So many antennas can send the bandwidth. We know of antennas that send 26 uh, gigahertz uh, bandwidth. It's the coherence of this range that you can, by Fourier analysis, compress that into a short pulse. So large bandwidth does not necessarily translate into a short pulse because there should be some phase relation between the frequency component. All, you have to sum over all the frequency component coherently. That's the key. So the challenges on the antennas, uh, this is not an e ENM course, the impedance bandwidth, the transmission coefficient, et cetera, et cetera. So let me give you some examples. So uh, this is uh, real data from log periodic antenna. Log periodic antenna 
As you know, they are made of dipole, like sticks, right? They're oriented this way. And they are sized in such a way that each stick, each dipole, transmits certain bandwidths of frequencies. OK? Capisci? More or less. The phase in a good antenna is shown on the top. So it's a smooth phase. Because of the way you measure it, you, every 90 degrees or 180 degrees, you change uh, the angle. But the angle actually from the left of the bandwidth to the right of the bandwidth, from the small frequency to the large, it's linear. OK? That's what it means. On the other hand, bait phase characteristic of the log periodic is shown at the bottom. So the antenna can, does have the bandwidth, but doesn't have the coherence, cannot transmit short pulses. So let's look at it. Uh, so these are uh, other antennas that people use. But here is uh, the clincher. You want to put a monocycle on the left, and this is how it is received, propagating through the air. It's completely distorted. And if you want to send the short pulse, it becomes very broad. So you lose on the beat rate, and you lose on the quality of the signal. So far, so good? You still with me? We're still mounting the cakes. It's all right. So what's the novelty? So instead of having the antenna facing this way, like a Yagi antenna, or like uh, antennas that you used to be on your roof, you turn it sideways. That's the whole trick. That's number one. So you take the antenna like this, and you turn it like that. That's called broadside broadcasting. And the trick is like this. This dipole, this sticks, will send out its own frequency range, say between 0 and 100 megahertz. The next stick is going to be a bit shorter, and it's going to cover the frequency range between 100 and 200. The third stick is going to cover the frequency range between 200, 300, 300, 400, and so on. If you feed that structure sideways with a short pulse that you made somehow on the backyard, and you feed it all together, what will happen is that the larger stick will transmit only its frequency range. And then the shorter stick will tra uh, transmit its own frequency range. And what will happen is, as the whole pulse is forwarded through this arrangement, the phase will be maintained throughout all those elements. This, you turn it like that. That's all. We got a pattern out of this. Here is what it is. So uh, each uh, frequency is transmitted through its own element, and they all have the same phase. And when you combine them, they become a short pulse. So we did a simulation, 13 elements. This is how it looks. You feed the pulse through the transmission line. Each uh, element, in this case dipole, transmits its own frequency band. And when you combine them together, this is the simulation. You can get a 3 dB range of 10 gigahertz antenna and a phase which is almost linear throughout the 10 gigabit, t gigahertz. This is by far the best antenna that you can buy in terms of linearity and in terms of ultra short pulses. Now, the idea is general. If you can do it in this range, you can do it in principle in any frequency range. You can deliver this antenna to 10 gigahertz, 40 gigahertz, terahertz, even the optical range. If you feed the, the pulse, this is a monocycle, into the antenna, the output matches fairly faithfully uh, after the uh, input. So how many antennas do you need? Well, if I can get by with two antennas, I'm good. One antenna, to have a broadband antenna, it's like having a broadband amplifier. A broadband amplifier is hard to get. It's very expensive. If you can build it up from small amplifiers that you can sort of build them up coherently, you're much better off in terms of economy and in terms of efficiency. So same with the antenna. There aren't many broadband antennas. The largest one is the Discon or whatever. They usually are the two gigahertz and, uh, broadband antennas. So what I'm offering is a recipe that you have narrowband antenna and you figure them out 
side by side in the spectral domain such that their sum of frequency covers the entire range that you wish to cover. OK, so let's do it with two. You see these are uh, diamond antennas, different sizes, because each element covers a different antenna bandwidth. And you such divide them in a way that the larger one covers the lower frequency band from, say, 0 to uh, 5 gigahertz. And the smaller one covers from 5 gigahertz to the 10 gigahertz. And so you put them together. And this is how it looks. If you have only one antenna, that's the belly type curve, it covers only part of the bandwidth. If you, the phase is only linear in that range. But if you cover them together, here is the pulse. The pulse is faithfully uh, following the input. So you can cover 10 gigahertz of a pulse with two antennas alone. This is the experiment. We did some experiment. Let's move on for the sake of time. And uh, can you do beam forming? Can you tweak the beam from left to right? Yes, you can. This is not a phased array antenna, which most people know. Because in phased array antenna, all the elements are exactly the same. And there is a restriction on the spacing between the antenna. This is time domain antenna. The distance between elements doesn't matter, as long as it is within the wavelengths of the uh, smaller range. So if your antenna, for example, is in the millimeter wave, the distance between them should be smaller than, say, 30 centimeters. But the distance doesn't matter. In phase the antenna, you have to place them exactly at the uh, distance of a half a wavelength. Not only that, you have to play with the phase such that the uh, propagation will be in one direction or another. Here, you can do the same uh, game. You can phase the different frequencies. And you can uh, turn the, uh, the pulse from left to right. And you can see that in either position, either left or right, you can faithfully uh, mimic the pulse. This is a pulse now. This is not frequencies to me. OK? So let's, do, let's see how we can do it in the optical domain. And this is how it looks in the optical domain. It, it looks very much on the left. This is the diamond antenna. The peak reflectance of this antenna, which is uh, typical of its resonance, it's about 100 nanometer, which for you guys, because you're thinking frequency, it's about 60 terabit, terahertz, sorry. 60 terahertz of, uh, of baseband information, so to speak. OK? And here are, uh, this is a little bit, uh, a bit out of the scope here. These antennas are covered with graphene, just to have a test molecule of this. And what I'm uh, banking on is that I'm shining it with one wavelength. Uh, it's an infrared light. It's 700 nanometer. And I'm detecting it in a different wavelength through some nonlinear effect, which is called Raman effect. You see that the antenna, only the antenna, there are other elements on this chip, but only the antenna radiated and glow. And they glow at uh, 900 nanometer. In other words, I'm shining with one wavelength, one color, and I'm detecting it in another color through a nonlinear effect. And you see how useful this uh, glowing is. I can de very detect it e very easily through this effect. So that's it. Uh, we uh, propose an ultra short pulse antennas, an antenna array that uh, uh, are driven by coherent excitation. And we can demonstrate ultra short pulses characteristic in the microwave and even in the visible range. Thank you.